Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, hey, everyone. This is Game Center Live. This is our weekly show here at NYU Game Center, which is a, a game design uh, university program here in New York City. And uh, today we are uh, starting up our first show of the semester. It's very, very exciting. Also really janky because our camera broke. So I'm actually using a webcam right now. But it doesn't look too bad, right? I look OK, hopefully. Um, uh, today, we have a lovely show for you today. We are hosting uh, Steph Clark on the stream today. Uh, and in preparation for Steph's talk here at Game Center later tonight. Uh, and we also have our typical, oh, captions are cut off. Uh-oh. Uh, we'll have to fix that soon. Um, can you go, can you right click onto <laughs> browser live caption uh, filters and go to cropping padding and change the cropping section on the thing? On the right, yeah, change the numbers to be smaller. Yeah. Maybe smaller than that. <laughs> live, live TV, folks. You gotta love it. Um, yeah, keep playing with that. Hopefully it, why does this always break? Uh, okay, accessibility is the worst. <laughs> okay, disability studies 101, the world is what disables people, right? So what really ruins this is that Twitch does not have good captioning technology. It's not our fault, <laughs> it's not other people's fault, it's society's fault. Okay. Um, oh, there it is. You might need to shrink that too so that it's. <laughs> um, uh, also, as part of our new semester, uh, we're having uh, guest student operators where it's their first time operating OBS in the show. So, you know, take it easy on them. Don't be too mean to them. They're learning, you know, driver and training and all that. Uh, okay, let's get started with uh, announcements. Yeah. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, Playtest Thursday is tonight, 5.30 to 7 p.m. At, here at 370 J Street, 64 Lounge. Uh, this is a free playtesting event, open to students and the public. Come eat free pizza and test your games. It's good, super fun. Um, also, uh, in general, if you do want to visit us here in New York City at uh, NYU Game Center, um, you should usually email us first. This is our lovely building, and we <laughs> love it when people come visit us. But if you do drop by unannounced, um, we might be too busy to talk to you, or we might be like teaching or something. So if you do want like a full tour and full experience, it's probably best for you to actually email us before you come visit us. I'm not calling out anyone in particular, <laughs> but I'm just saying this is a thing that happens sometimes. Uh, next. 
Uh, okay, so big event tonight is we are hosting our first talk of the semester, uh, which is called Rooftop Cop, a five-year retrospective with Steph L. Clark. That is a talk about a beautiful game called Rooftop Cop. Mm -hmm. That's tonight, Thursday, February 13th at 7.15 p.m. Uh, here at 370 J Street on the 12th floor. Uh, if you want to come to that, please RSVP at our website, gamecenter.nyu.edu, uh, so that we know how many chairs to put out and how much space to reserve. Um, also, uh, Game Center BFAs, if you're watching this, which you should be, uh, the undergrad career fair is happening tomorrow, Friday, February 14th. That's 1 to 4 p.m., uh, 370 J Street on the 12th floor. Uh, RSVP is required because this is a special thing that we do just for undergrads here at NYU. So make sure you RSVP that. Check your email, okay? Please just, please just for once, just check your email and then maybe you can get some jobs, okay? <laughs> Next. Uh, Carol Queen 5v5 Fridays have returned. Uh, that's every Friday night. Uh, here at 370 J Street um, on the sixth floor. Uh, you can come learn how to play Kill or Queen. You can actually see the Kill or Queen cabinets right behind me. Uh, they are real. They are on free play. Just come in and you can play it. Um, come hang out with also some of the best Kill or Queen players in the world. And uh, you can do that every Friday, I believe, at 7 p.m., 370 J Street, 64 Lounge. If you want more information, just talk to one of our faculty here, Charles Pratt, or join the Killer Queen NYC Facebook group. Um, in the chat, uh, uh, Hoonigan asks, uh, are college students the only ones who are allowed to visit us here at NYU Game Center? And the answer is um, no. Wait, the answer is yeah, no. Anyone can come visit us um, within reason, I guess. Um, you don't need any NYU affiliation or some kind of academic affiliation to come visit us. OK, next. A um, lot of announcements to get through today, sorry. Uh, we are hosting a big uh, AAA 3D character art workshop this weekend. Uh, this is a master class slash weekend intensive with a uh, professional AAA character artist named Chris Wells. He sculpted that thing right there. Uh, looks pretty cool. I think he's a good character artist. Uh, this is running Saturday and Sunday, February 15th to 16th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So it's kind of a full day. It's a weekend intensive. But uh, this is for people who know a little bit of 3D but kind of want to level up to like an intermediate level of stuff where um, we're, well, it covers like anatomy fundamentals, sculpting fundamentals, stuff that you can't just easily get from a video tutorial and you benefit from having an, like an actual living person come in and show you all that stuff. Uh, so that's this weekend. Uh, we only have a few seats left open to both students and general admission and alumni and adjuncts. So uh, if you are interested in leveling up your character art game, uh, please go to gamecenter.nyu.edu and get a ticket so you can attend that workshop. That's this weekend, okay? Um, what's going on next? Okay, oh, this is the Folk Game Game Jam. Uh, so this is a student-run game jam, very exciting, next Saturday, February 22nd, uh, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So it's kind of a low impact, more of a chill kind of game jam where you make folk games. And folk games are games that aren't board games and aren't sports, and aren't video games, and aren't card games. I guess those are folk games. What is a folk game? I guess you'll also figure that out at the jam, too. Um, this is open only to NYU students. Um, please RSVP at uh, folkgamegamejam.com if you're interested in attending that. Uh, and then next, uh, last announcement, uh, code help desks are running today as all as are all our help desks. Uh, we, have, we offer a variety of help desks to our students uh, in code, in writing, in 3D, and in 2D. Check the ticker or our website for info on those hours. But in particular, this semester, we have expanded code help desks. Um, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, code help desk runs until 8 PM. So if you are uh, working late or you are crunching, even though you shouldn't be crunching, but if you're crunching anyway despite our advice or because of poor planning, um, 
make sure you make use of these resources. These are, uh, this, these are dark, this is dark code desk, dark code help desk. I forget <laughs> how we're branding it. But anyway, uh, come hang out and get help on your code. That's on the Six Floor Lounge. And as always, uh, feel free to visit our website or Facebook things, even though Facebook is terrible, or visit our Twitter thing, even though Twitter's bad, and visit YouTube. I think YouTube's going down the hole, too. Uh, all these things are bad, but we're on them anyway, because that's t life in 2020. Uh, OK, let's uh, hide that slideshow and uh, move on to our next segment. So our next segment is very exciting. Uh, we are hosting uh, Steph L. Quark here on the stream. Oh, hello. Mic, the frame? mic levels are good? Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Um, and you might want to change the text, too, from Welcome to Game Center Live. We are still at Game Center Live. Did it bump it? Um, uh, so first, Steph, uh, do you want to tell the stream a little bit about yourself and your background in games? Um, sure. Uh, so I was part of the first group of MFAs ever, I guess. So I graduated in 2014. Um, and I had not made any games prior to coming here. So it was basically my entire introduction to, to game design and, and all that stuff. Um, the whole world uh, happened here. So um, yeah, it's kind of cool to be able to, to, to revisit this project, which was my MFA thesis at the time. Um, so to revisit that here, it's kind of fun. I'm kind of excited because um, a lot of our MFAs are actually in the middle of their thesis year right now. Yeah, it's a good time. And feeling a lot of anxiety. So will you have like words, calming words of wisdom um, and <laughs> maybe relief a, for them? Maybe a little bit, yeah. I think I think so. I tried to work that in. I tried to make it, you know, there's some, there's a takeaway in there maybe, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, doesn't even, it doesn't even be a capital T takeaway, but I think, um, you know, a little bit of emotional support to tell them that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I do talk about the process, right? And, and mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, you don't really always know exactly what you're doing, but you can get there. So, I mean, I'm not going to spoil the talk, but. Oh, yes, um, please don't spoil the talk. No, it's fine. Um, but I, yeah, I do, I do talk about that because it was, it, it started off as a huge group thing and then eventually became a solo project mm -hmm. um, and survived. So, you know, it can be done. And it was like basically the first things I'd ever programmed on my own, which is why they're going to run kind of funny because this was all, these are the first video games I ever made. So um, they, still, they still work though, which is good. This is good. All right. So we're going to play some Rooftop Cop here on the stream right now. Let's switch over. Um, so this is Rooftop Cop. Um, I think. Oh gosh, we forgot to hook up sound. Um, that's okay, we can just hum. But the sound is nice on this. We'll it's have to, true. Hum. We'll have I to did, hum all the sound effects. You know, the one thing I don't talk about in the talk, because I didn't, I didn't have time to fit it in, is, is the music. I made an entire album to pair with the game, and mm -hmm. I just don't even get to it at the talk. But yeah, listen to it, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a whole soundtrack and all the sound design, but that's true. it's okay. That, maybe that's a special experience we'll reserve for the viewers at home. Yeah. Download Rooftop Cop, which is actually you've made free right now, right? It's for free, yeah. Or I, I like to say a zero dollar minimum price. Zero dollar minimum. Pay what you wish. Yeah. Um, ideally, you pay a little bit to support artists and yeah. indie designers. But you can have it. You can have it for. If you you can play have it for free. It for free. Yeah. Um, um, can you pull up the link to the itch.io for the Rooftop Cop and put in the chat? Uh, okay, so let's uh, play some rooftop cop. Go for Who it. should have the controls? Um, I don't know. We can well for the first one. We can kind of share actually. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll be the mouse, and you can be the keyboard. Okay. Because you know the original version of this game was kind of a two-player game because it was all for public play. Uh huh. Um, so that was that was the thing is that you sort of traded off. And, Someone walked in the cave, and then somebody else took over the mouse control. Yeah, so you just kind of walk around and hit spacebar. Okay, okay, yeah. And I'm going to do this stuff. Yeah, of course I'm going to watch. Oh, there's the click. Extremely slow. Uh-oh, what's happening? Is it okay? I think so. Okay, so let's let's cite some people. Yeah, okay, here, well, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> 
You said spacebar when you're near enough to them. So just sort of, oh, uh, when's a good time to cite him? Well, I'm just assigning arbitrary values. So okay. really any time. Okay, so, so we've assigned know, an a, a arbitrary value of 10,040 to this person. And now we're going to cite them and give them a ticket. You gotta get, oh, uh-oh, uh -oh. I'm not close enough. This is the, uh, the, the stop and frisk game. So it's complete, like, you just get to do whatever you want. Um, okay, so we've stopped and frisked this person. Yeah. Very timely subject in well, New uh, York City right now. I know. Well, you know, it never goes away. Um, oh, God, that guy. I'm um, sorry. So this is all just police nonsense, basically. So, yeah, you can sort of just, like, cite people for random things. They're not really doing anything um, wrong. They're just around. So we are the names. We are the rooftop cop. Yeah. We yeah, are the that, namesake of this, the mm -hmm. titular the eponymous <laughs> yeah. rooftop cop. Um, Not on a roof, though. So Very much on the street. Then the other thing you can do is just sort of place arbitrary barricades places. Mm -hmm. just like, yeah, so you got to go up and use them, though. Oh, okay. It's not a great design. To build them? Yeah, so I'll just put, I'll put a couple here. A helicopter doesn't just airlift the barricades for me? You gotta hit, there you go. You go build that one. There you go. Nice. So now they just kind of like, they can't walk around them. Oh, so now I made like a little checkpoint, like a little <laughs> Gestapo checkpoint. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I didn't assign danger to them, though. It's okay. Sometimes... I gave know, them a ticket. I stopped and frisked them for nothing. Well, now you get it. Um, all right. So, oh, this, this mouse click is not really working so well. Oh, wait. Do you want to use the button? Oh, oh, the button was what was not working. Okay. So, oh, okay. also, there's this weird thing. Here we go. Okay. So, we can also put them under drone surveillance. <laughs> yeah, it's this watch thing. So, that sort of reveals the, the, their number, which is, you know, it's all nonsense. It's all arbitrary. Uh -huh. um, but there are, uh, I, I do. I mentioned this a little bit in the talk. Um, Martin, can we fix the captions? There are you? some um, sort of hidden stuff in here that doesn't particularly matter, but I did. I liked including it, uh -huh. um, which is that it does keep track of like how long people have been standing still. Occasionally, they like litter. It's all just um, minor crimes mm -hmm. that don't actually play into. Um, they don't actually affect what you're doing. Oh gosh. So I'll talk about that more in like later tonight about like uh, hidden systems sort of stuff. Uh, unlock the source and then you can stretch um, it, unstretch it. Oh, okay. But yeah, so I mean they like little like little things like loitering or whatever, okay. sort of like uh, not really crimes, but just like ways to control people, sort of stuff. So. Um, so this is New York City, huh? Um, you know, I don't know. I. I this is Game Maker, so the, I had to make buildings that are boxes. So I guess it's kind of New York-y. Um, Should I cite them yet? Yeah, go for it. OK. Yeah, give me those crime points. Um, so tell us a little bit about your process in making this. So this is main Game Maker, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, actually all. But don't spoil your talk. Yeah, but, I know. You know, well, tell you know, us a little okay. bit about it. It might be different viewership, right? So uh, all. Well, so all but one of the games was made in Bennett Foddy's Prototype Studio class. Oh, do you want to explain what the Prototype Studio class is? For yeah, so this, um, I took it in 2014, the spring of 2014. It was the first time it was ever run. Bennett was new faculty. Um, and you, we just got a prompt um, every week, and we had to make something. Um, yes, you have to, like, it's, it's the, the trackpad's not working. So anyway, you have to make one game every week. Um, based on a prompt, um, I really liked it because you know it's the same group of people every week. Oh, you have to sorry. you have to like show um, show something. Um, you get to present it to the, uh -huh. to the class. So it was kind of performative in that way. And so I made these kind of like performative -y feeling games because um, I'm basically just like VJing them, right? I was like go up and play it for the class for like six minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, uh, I knew that I wanted to make a bunch of games for my MFA thesis, so I just, I used that class basically to sort of explore a bunch of ideas, and then I kind of picked my, the four that made the most sense um, mm -hmm. to pair with the other thing I'd been working on, and, and, and that's kind of how they all came out. And honestly, not a lot changed between the like one week prototype and the final version. There's like very few changes, like some graphical updates, but this looks basically the same. This is maybe the, I don't want to say the weakest one, but it's, yeah. The, I like Should the other ones the better. Yeah, go for it, yeah. Uh-oh, we didn't make our quota. Uh -oh. That's okay. The numbers just keep going up and down. And what PD's mad at us. Okay. Um, 
So what were the so Prototype Studio is prompt? So these were each made from different prompts from yes. Prototype Studio. Yeah, I wonder if I can remember what those. Do you remember the were. prompts? I think the first one was violence. Okay. Um, the prompt for this one was I think it was like game for an alien culture or something. It was just like, what do you want to say <laughs> to aliens? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I think I watched a lot of Glacier documentaries or something. Um, and then I made this. OK. Which is, you can play it. You got it. I haven't played this one. I've only played the first one okay. before. Yeah. So the other ones are all better <laughs> than the first oh, one. Oh, no, I'm in the snow. How do I get out? You can do it. So this is a capture the flag game for one player, um, and there's the flag there. I'm pointing like so I can see. I'm the getting desert thing. golf vibes a little bit from this. Um, I think this was around the same time. I think desert golf came out like around that summer, maybe. Oh, okay. I think I don't remember. Or it could be like parallel remember, construction. You know, yeah, yeah. Too. I mean, I remember people playing. I I like the the vibe of that game. I remember people playing it at like GDC and stuff. Um, while I was there, so. Was oh, I have the flag. I have the flag. I love that your your fans are like going crazy. So that's part of part of this game is that this all this <laughs> I this is my only physics game. Um, this was my the only physics game I've ever made. My personal challenge was to try and make a game that uses physics that's not funny. Uh huh. Which is hard because physics is just like funny for free. Um, so. Uh, all, all these little ice chunks are tiny <laughs> physics objects. Oh. They're just like bumping Wait, into what? each other. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, you gotta put the. Oh, oh sorry, capture. sorry, you sorry. Capture it. There you go. Capture okay, it. Nice. Okay, now you gotta get another one. Just keep capping flags. Okay. That's how it works. What was the prompt for this? This was the game for an alien culture one. Ah. And for some reason, I was just like, they should know about uh, glaciers. <laughs> Seems right. Seemed appropriate. Have you seen a glacier in real life? Um, it's getting increasingly it's difficult to. Very funny. Yeah. Uh, no. Although that would be funny if like you could just like look out your window and see one and then one day you just couldn't anymore. Oh. I saw one. Oh, oh yeah, it's physics-y. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't notice it like sliding around so much before. That's cool. Yeah, it kind of sneaks up on you, which is what I like about it. Yeah, it's like slow physics. Usually physics in games is very like fast and in your face, right? Yeah, this one is... Oh god, how do I get up there? Oh, it's so no. steep. <laughs> um, I... Where's my jetpack? Great. Uh, so this one, I, my original intent was to make this like a 24-hour game, but this, it takes like six minutes or something now. Oh no! Six or seven minutes, because I, you know, it's whatever length it was for the class. But I was like, I could make it take an entire day, <laughs> um, because of the way that the, the uh -oh. physics work. Oh no! Should I just give up and die? Well, don't give up. You got to capture the flag. But I can't. That's the whole. That's the whole game. I can't get up there now. I'm just digging a worse hole for me. <laughs> oh my god, oh no, oh no. Oh gosh. The sound in this one is maybe one of my favorites. So if you ever get a chance to play it uh, with sound, those of you at home. Um, it's going really well. Make maybe sure you talk a little bit more because your mic might not pick you up sometimes. Talk, louder. talk more or I mean, louder? More louder. And okay, louder. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty quiet in general, so. Um, I think it's calibrated to me and Naomi's voices. Oh, we right, shout right, a lot. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think I'm just really royally fucked here. Yeah, I mean, you can you can let it go. It'll eventually you'll run out of. It'll end. This can is the I only one that ends. I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you that. Can I just freeze to death in the you snow. You could just let it go, but that's that's like less exciting for the people watching. You know, you gotta put on a show here. Guess how many frames of animation this walk is. How many frames of animation is it? Um, I'm guessing there's zero frame. One frame of animation. Two. Um, oh wait, no, 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 no. There is movement. Two. There's 22. 22? <laughs> oh, no. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just like, Wait, yeah. Wait, there's 22 there's, frames there's of animation? There's 22 frames in this walk animation. Oh. The character is like 10 pixels tall or something. It's, there's no reason for that. You know, so, um, but it does look really nice, right? Look at that. Look at a little like, I don't know, something about it. Oh, here we go. 
Where do you, oh, oh, it's kind of beautiful how the world is ending. Yeah, isn't it nice? Look at these little chunks. Pretty. Yeah, maybe we should just let the world end. Maybe that's just how we should go, yeah. right? Yeah, liberalism is cool. Liberalism <laughs> I'm is really cool. Into it. Thanks, liberalism. <laughs> um, can we hide the closed captioning available? Because that's not actually true. Oh, no. We didn't turn it on, unfortunately. Um, OK, so that's that okay. one. Oh, and then you just stare at a blank screen? Yeah, wow. but it's up to you. You know, you got to move on. So. Um, okay, this one I do remember the prompt, because this is the first prompt. I oh, think. wait. Should we have the viewers? How about we do more of these fun viewer interaction things? So can the, anyone in the chat try to guess what you thought the prompt was for this game? I'll be surprised if you get it, because it's And I'm going to be guessing, prompt. too. Okay. Try to give me some hints. OK. And Martin, you, you play, too. Should I give you a hint, like a really vague hint? Yes, give us a vague hint to start us off. What uh, do we think the prompt was? The prompt is mechanical. It's not thematic. The prompt has to do with the mechanics and interactions. Not the, yeah, it's not, not, the, it's not a thematic art. prompt. OK. Like yeah. Death vacation. Death vacation. Ooh. Death vacation. <laughs> Maybe Bennett should steal that for the I class. That would be a good one. OK. OK. Um, so this one uh, is... Mirabai, we didn't even start playing the game yet. How can you guess? OK. Uh, oh, gosh. OK, the platforms. Death vacation. Oh, this, oh, why is it running? It's oh, wait. Running slow. That's OK. They don't, they don't like me mm -mm. busting into their space, it seems. Oh, Imagine am I just that. stealing their stuff? Oh, that's cool. Um, oh, shelf the Elf. Yeah, OK, I believe that one. Oh, these are, these are good prompts. Oh, you got caught on the first floor. I'm Wait, how did I get caught? Who was catching so if me? They, if they let you, oh, it's random, random last names. So there's a show. Oh, Winnie's Winnie. in this. Yeah. Um, so if you let them get to like the little, the little phone thingy. So here, I'll show you. Um, you're caught. It's running awful slow, like but that's no, OK. No, it's. um. Oh my god. So you kind of want to grab as much stuff as you can, and it you then you weigh more. Um, oh, and then we break through the floor. And then that causes the floor to break. Uh, and then, you know, you just into the next apartment or whatever. This is the civil forfeiture game. <laughs> OK, so this is, we're clearly in New York. Well, that was pain. mostly a thing in the South, I feel like. Where they, reward. where they would just, uh, yeah. So you kind of want, you want enough stuff to get through the floor. What's the theme, risk versus reward, um, like Martin said? No. Oh, I thought that was a post there, uh, or a <laughs> chat thing. It, um, it was not. Hmm, what else could it be? Here, so I'll try to uh, fail, and maybe that will help. Oh my god, you're so heavy now. Yeah. So you can, you can throw things out the window, too, which sort of helps. I'm not going to do that because I want to show you what happens. So this about how like, oh, oh my god. god. Oof. Oh, oh my god. And he just got crushed by the weight of everything you stole? <laughs> Whoa. There it goes. Oh, you know, you're confiscating it because you're a cop? Yeah. So you know, you know uh, civil forfeiture is right. where they just take your stuff. Because it's like of interest to an investigation, or yeah, sometimes they just take, sometimes they just take it. Sometimes it's just like, well, you did a bad thing, so we're just you have cash in your car, so oh, we're they don't have a reason. It's just ours, they yeah, have a reason. yeah. So, and I think Texas, the um, I might be wrong, but I think in Texas that eclipsed actual theft as like the amount of things. Oh, taken cops just taking shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I don't think it's legal anymore. Um, but there's a strong gravity component to it, which interests me. It, is, it really is running at like quarter speed. I wonder what that what that's about. But that's OK. It's more fun when you can go faster. I mean, I'm running on battery power right now. Mm. So I think the Razer, the good folks at Razer have saw fit to lower your frame rate. Wow. I mean, a lot of it is my fault, to be fair, because I, I was a bad program at the time. I'm a little bit better now. I mean, it works, right? We talk a lot about this, right? Where, you know, what makes a good game developer? What makes a good programmer, right? Um, I think I'm firmly on the camp that you don't need to be a good coder to be a good game developer. Oh, no, right? absolutely not. I'm not, I'm not a, a great programmer by any means, but 
Um, Oh wait, they don't fall through the floor with me. Oh. No, they don't. Which would be funny, but And then you can crush them with your weight. That would be cool. <laughs> wait, so you didn't guess the Oh, okay, the theme. You're, you're really close, I theme. think. Theme. Come on, chat, help me out. Um, I think the theme of this was um too big to fail. Mm. Um injustice. You can throw out the window there. Um oh, wait. What do we do with the window? There you oh. go. But now you need to go grab more stuff. Now we're like, not heavy it enough. It still counts toward your, your, your score, your end score. Agglom agglomeration? Agglomeration? No. Mirabai guesses agglomeration. It's four words. It's four words? How am I going to guess four words? That's why I was saying. I don't know why you wanted to guess, but um, you know, you're really into this, so I'm trying to help out. Martin, type some words into the chat. Help me brainstorm this. Agglomeration. What are some things that are happening on the screen? Um, things that are happening. Um, theft. Well, falling. remember it's not thematic. It's oh, mechanical. oh, 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 oh. Um, object <laughs> aqua acquisition. Resource acquisition. You think Bennett would tell people to make a resource acquisition game? Um, I don't know what Bennett's capable of. <laughs> Um, uh, A and B and, smash okay, yeah, the smash the glass ceiling. You know, that last one is close. Smash the, through the floor. That's cl also close. Downwall clone? No. Um, Do we tell you? Okay, oh, oh yeah, we're at the end of our time. So, yes, yeah. just tell us. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it was crash or crash through. Crash through. Wait, that's not four words. Crash or crash through. Oh, crash or crash through. That's the whole prompt. Crash or crash through. So you either crash or you crash through. Ah. Uh, anyway. I'm into it. Yeah. It's a pretty good prompt. I can't remember what the inspiration game was. Okay. So is that the that's the end of it? Um, yes. Okay. Unfortunately, we have to move on to the next segment. Because now we've moved to our new one hour format. Ooh. Short and sweet and sleek like a cheetah, like a finely tuned sports car. I'm going to stop talking. Great. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Um, Two parks in one hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, just one last reminder, if you are in the New York City area, please join us tonight, 7.15 p.m. Why not 7 p.m.? I don't know. It sounds more specific. People okay, 7.15 p.m. Do not show up at 7 p.m. Show up at 7.15. Uh, it's 370 J Street, 12th floor, um, and uh, you'll get to see Steph talk in detail about the process of making this game and what happened afterwards. Oh, yeah, what happened afterwards. All right, well, All right. thank you so much for joining Thanks. us, and um, see you in class later <laughs> yeah, like two hours. My TA. Uh, okay cool uh, okay let's move to our next segment which is called the discourse hey uh, i turned this on hopefully yeah. it's picking yeah. up excellent yeah i think yeah it looks like you're on the mixer good cool um so welcome back welcome back yeah yeah so uh, a whole new it's decade been a while. Do you want to stall for time while I open up a bunch of tabs? Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. That. We can um, just, yeah, just open up one at a time, whatever. We can But we can then they'll see my Slack. Well, if you open up a tab and you just drag drag it in, I don't know. I can't even find It's you. DMs with Your you DMs. and me and Frank. <laughs> uh, Frank Lance is not with us uh, this week for the discourse because, unfortunately, he's feeling sick. Uh, Wait, don't say like that he's not with us. You know, that's like a euphemism for something, you know? Is it? Is so that, death, mean, right? is that yeah, a like death euphemism? Yeah, like he's no longer. Oh, that's if he's no longer with us. But he is, he is still with us <laughs> in spirit. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he just has the flu, unfortunately. So feel better, Frank. Feel better, Frank. Frank, you better be watching this. Better be putting your time in. Um, Naomi, what did you do over the yeah. winter vacation? What did I do? Oh, I... Um, I spent a bunch of time in the suburbs of Boston, uh, which is where my mother-in-law lives. And I went there with my, my baby daughter, who's about this big now. Oh, my goodness. I guess she's about, she's actually kind of long, if they you stretch her out. So, that's yeah, a long about baby. That yeah, she's a long baby. Uh, and um, I was in China for a while as well. I, I uh, Wait, you were left, in China? Yeah, oh, I wow, went to gosh. China over okay. the winter break. 
I left before um, all of the panic about the coronavirus really hit. Uh, so I didn't have to deal with any of that. Um, nice. That's how we do it, right? In yeah, and in and out. What did you do over the winter break? Um, I uh, went on holiday, visited, also, also visited my in-laws. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, oh, uh, a little further south? Where yeah, a little also? further south than New Zealand. That's a, how, many, how many time zones away is New Zealand? Is it like, like 15 hours ahead or something New like Zealand's that? New Zealand's basically the opposite. Yeah, of, of this. I think it's made basically the other side of the world. Right, right. Yeah, you know, China's 13 hours ahead, so it was like, yeah, flip, flip flopping AM and PM. Okay. Like, you know, it's fun to be in like opposite land, right? It's like. Yeah, it's like you're like, oh, if I dug through the earth from here, I would uh, be in the middle of the ocean and I would drown and die. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but, I mean, it's also like, you know, like a different culture, you know? It's like, oh, like you're here in New York City, you know, we like keep up with the news and everything is happening here and it's super cool. And then you go to New Zealand, and it's just, you know, like, very slow. Oh, interesting. Nothing's happening. It's not quite like that in Shenzhen, let me tell you. Oh, in Shenzhen? Yeah. That's where you went? I was in Shenzhen, Oh, yeah. wow, that's intense. It's, uh, that place is, like, practically bigger than New York now. Um, but we should talk about news Yeah, instead of okay, our lives. so the discourse... No one here cares about our lives. The discourse is where we talk about, they like, want... what are people angry and yammering about and all head up about on the internet. Uh, uh, let's switch over. Yeah, so... Here we go. First thing, uh, the big thing. This just happened yesterday. So like hot to game and talk. off the discourse. Um, Tim Sweeney. So this is actually a follow up from slightly later in the afternoon. Uh, let me hide, hide, the, hide the task bar. All right. So oh Tim, my god, and it comes up anyway. Okay, go. go. Tim, Tim Sweeney um, basically said he he gave a keynote at Dice. And the most incendiary thing that he said was, uh, he th thinks that politics should have uh, should be nowhere near games uh, as a business. That like game businesses should just have, like get politics out, have a church and state division. I'm not sure what the church and the state is in this. Uh, video games are the church. Video games right? are the church, and the state is politics, like all okay. politics. Uh, so then all the, everyone was like, oh my god, this is what a kind of ridiculous statement is this. The funny thing is, it's almost impossible to figure out exactly what he meant. Uh, because he touched on so many different things. He was like, you can't even go get a chicken sandwich now without declaring what your ideology is. And, and to kill a mockingbird, right, by right. the way. And it's like, what well, are he's, you talking he about? He started this whole keynote being like, to kill a mockingbird. Now that's like an po interesting political creative work. That's the kind of thing games should do. Now, let me tell you about loot boxes. And then he complained <laughs> about loot boxes, which this is the guy who's the, he's one of the richest people in the world now. He's at $7 billion. <laughs> Uh, I think most of it is probably from Fortnite at this point, but also Unreal and uh, you know now the Epic Store. But uh, he's like, oh man, we should you know the game industry has to stop these predatory practices against consumers. It's like the interesting thing for uh, mm, Fortnite. <laughs> mm, wonder what Fortnite does. <laughs> like, How does Fortnite make its money? I, and mm. he's, but he's the kind of guy where you're like, yeah, he he feels like he can say whatever he wants because he's not really beholden in terms of business to almost anybody, right? Uh, and so he was criticizing Apple and Android, but then he went off on this tangent about politics. Mm -hmm. Then he finally clarified uh, later in the day yesterday that what he meant was he didn't think marketing departments uh, should get involved in politics as a way of selling games. And that if there's going to be politics in games, it should come from the heart of the creative people who are making the games. Which is like, that's a way less objectionable statement. But, but then it's you, still kind of incoherent. It's kind of weird because <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what are there? Does he think, like? What, so who believes that marketing departments are like? I know. Put some politics. In this, <laughs> then we'll use it to sell a billion copies. You know. Um, actually, but the, the thing is, there are people who believe that happens, and they're the people who scream about SJW agendas in games because they think that the reason there's a gay character in a game is because some evil pink haired marketing lady forced the game developers to put it in, right? So at the end of the second where you're like, wait a second, Tim Sweeney, like what's going on in your brain? <laughs> Who's whispering in your ear? What are you even talking about? Um, it's almost like his po political stance is itself invoking politics and crossing this church and state divide politics. Almost as if, yeah. It's almost like you can't avoid it. Well, the most innocuous version of what he said is something like, look, we're a game store. We don't want to censor anyone or, or we, you know, companies like Blizzard and Epic shouldn't be telling streamers what they can and can't say about political controversies in Hong Kong, which is like, okay, but like you can't really get away from the politics, right? 
um, what's, what Steam or Epic allows on their store or doesn't allow on their store, you know this very well, it's like extremely political. And what they do about harassing speech or homophobia rampant in Steam forums or wherever. The only place banning gay people <laughs> apparently isn't political, right? It's just it's right. good, clean fun that everyone can just agree Well, what's about, political is if you go somewhere and you say, oh, so my boyfriend and I were but like, no, like you can't do that, Robert. That's political because Sorry. some people have a problem with that. <laughs> yeah, let's keep going. Um, wait, well, yeah. this is still about Tim Sweeney. Yeah, so this is, this is, this is, I think, maybe in some ways the more interesting thing. He's like, Android and iOS, I hate you guys. This is really like shots fired in this war of open cross-play platforms, right? Which is, is, he, is heating up to become like a thing that uh, game company executives, at least, are, are uh, mad about in 2020. Because mm -hmm. uh, we're in a period where maybe we're going to see another wave of what they call, in, this, in a somewhat, uh, I, I guess, prejudiced way, balkanization, right? Referring to the Balkan states splintering. But, um, and it'll cause World War One or something. Yeah, then, yeah. And then the, somebody will throw a bomb. It will blow, blow up Archduke Franz Ferdinand or, or whoever the Archduke Franz Ferdinand is of games. I heard it's maybe going to be Phil Fish. So watch out, Phil. <laughs> um, the, Aw, Phil Fish. Aww. Yeah, you know, let's, let's hope for the best for him. Uh, Franz Ferdinand didn't, didn't fare well. But uh, yeah, so he, Tim Sweeney is like, yeah, you guys are all doing it wrong. Um, you should allow me to put my game uh, for free on all of your platforms, right? And so Apple and Android are like, no way, man. You have to pay us a cut. So there's just lots of toll roads going on, right, on the, on the internet with gaming. And a lot of people saying, no, we're going to create a little walled garden. You can play this game, but only if, if you sign up for our service. It's similar to what's going on with streaming TV now, right? I think it's like the same kind of business people are just saying like, yeah, let's carve this pie up. We'll all claim our territory and get a bunch of the like, gamers. Right, because you have to have your horse in the race, right? You have to... Right, yeah. And interestingly, there are people who are against this. Like, So Team Sweeney is like, no, well, because he represents not just a platform, but also an incredibly profitable game, he wants everything to work on every platform and all Fortnite players to be able to play with each other. The uh, next article, actually oh, kind of yes. interesting, two real veterans from Riot Games, including Christina Norman, uh, you know, when it's sort of a, a lead from the early days of League of Legends, uh, have, are launching a new company where they've raised $5 million to make co-op crossplay games. Uh, so uh -oh. I guess, yeah, they're both going to be cooperative, maybe like the original Fortnite. Uh, well, hopefully we'll do better than the original Fortnite before it became a Battle Royale game. And then also, yeah, the idea is that you could just play it across lots of different platforms. Um, I'm interested to see what they do, especially if the gameplay experience might be different depending on the platform you're on. Who mm -hmm. knows? Yeah, that's like something that people have been trying to do for years. But then, to, to speaking of that balkanization, the next story. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious what you think of this. So, do you know about GeForce Now? Yeah, it's uh, NVIDIA's cloud Stadia thing, right? Right. It's sort of like Stadia, except it's the idea is they don't sell you any games. That you just play your existing game library that you already purchased. Right. Uh, which, if you think about it, it sort of makes a weird amount of sense because if you already own the game, you have a license to play it. Mm -hmm. And so NVIDIA is like, sure, we'll just run a copy of this game on our servers and stream it to you. We both have a license to run it. Um, right, it's like legally, legally should be should fine, be okay. right? Except now more and more companies are basically being like, no, you can't do that. That's against our terms of service because, or against the end user license agreement, which of course is software is what you really own <laughs> instead of a piece of software. Because they're not getting a piece of that pie at all. Right. right, and so that's what they're mad about. They're like, well, you might have bought the game from us for 60 bucks, but now you're able to play it online in any device and you're, you're not paying us extra for that. So this really made like get canned, this whole NVIDIA attempt to do an end run around all of this, everyone grabbing a piece of the pie for cloud gaming. Uh-huh. <clears throat> yeah, there was, I think I saw a lot of buzz that a lot of people, log gamers, capital G gamers, in, were enjoying it because it was so convenient right. and relatively easy. Um, but now it seems like that age is ending. Yeah, it was a, too good to be true. Too right? good to be true. Just like a lot of these, um, oh, like really cheap way of enjoying something new and good. Uh, like what was that, that pass where you could get like movie tickets really cheap? Movie like pass? Movie pass? Yes. 
Yeah, movie pass. I was never on it, but I heard lovely things yeah, about it. Yeah, people were just getting, and then that kind of went away. But there's an analysis that I've seen going on recently that says to live in this age of all of these apps and technological platform plays is to, to have to try and scrape free bargain deals all the time in order to like not just get squeezed for all of your available money. Assuming you're mm -hmm. not super wealthy, that the way that you actually get affordable entertainment is to just like ride on one of these startups that's operating at a loss. Because eventually the startup is either gonna go out of business or they have to like raise their prices so that it's sort of like not a good deal anymore. Oh yeah, I'm on, wait. It says the volume on Naomi's mic has dropped significantly oh. like it's further away. Your it's mic has turned off. Oh, did it turn out badly? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. The other mic was still on and was picking you up. No, no, it's off. Or got switched? What happened? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, now it's okay. Uh, thanks for telling us. Okay, I turned it back on for now. Okay, should be good. Yeah, so. But it looks like, no, all three mics are running. I don't know why all oh, three mics are running. Oh, this battery is dead, though. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. let's swap out mics. Um, but I was just going to say that I'm actually we're using the Microsoft Game Pass thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which People has, like, a lot of free games for, like, a dollar or something. It's, like, actually been, it's actually, like, a surprisingly usable Microsoft product. Right. It's, like, it's actually been following a trend of surprisingly usable Microsoft products, but then everyone just, the Microsoft branding is just so, like, Right. Destroy, no one cares. What I think is interesting about this current period is it's now suddenly really hard to tell whether a game is popular or not. Mm -hmm. um, which maybe is good. I don't, I don't, I can't, it's not good if you're a game developer and you're trying to tell how many people are actually playing your games. Everyone who has a game on Apple Arcade right now, they're like, I have no idea what's going on with my game. Apple just sends me some arcane audience engagement numbers that mean almost nothing. And then I get a, some money from them and they're like, good job. Oh, thank you, Apple. And I think, you know, it's sort of like that with Epic now, too, right? Because they're just, they, they give tons of games away for free. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, we'll give you a bunch of money, uh, developers. And so there are these increasingly powerful people in the middle. It's like an algorithm, a black box. Yeah, it's a black box algorithm. Getting. And so when I was, I, I was complaining about Outer Worlds a while back. So people who watch the discourse a lot will remember, like, how much I hate this game. And um, even though I played the whole thing. And a lot of people there were mad at me back, of course, on social media. And a lot of the, what they said was, it doesn't matter how bad the game is, I got it for free on Microsoft Game Pass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess that's a good argument. They're like, what? Like, how, why do I care? It's free on Microsoft Game Pass. Um, so Share that, Obsidian. It's interesting, interesting. <laughs> like, <laughs> race towards zero, man. I feel like this is entering this weird, dangerous trend where the takeaway a lot of these platforms are getting is that not necessarily that Steam's 30% cut is bad. What's bad is that people knew it was a 30% cut. Oh, yeah. So if you just obscure that and hide that and make it into some weird arcane payout formula, then you're good for life. Right, and this makes Tim Sweeney look like the most virtuous man uh, for developer relations on the planet, right? Yeah, he did say a night. He said one nice thing in doing that talk, yeah. right? That he, well, he was like, people, the what that platforms that are selling games should take a two point five percent cut, like a credit card processor, and this actually kind of makes sense if you think about that are just handling commercial transactions. Yeah, but it's of course more complicated than that because they're controlling. I don't know. They're providing this whole platform that people have loyalty to because all of my achievements are on steam or whatever <laughs> i literally hide all the games in my epic games launcher it has a checkbox that lets you hide everything mm -hmm. and it just shows you the unreal engine editor oh really it just hides your game library it's beautiful i recommend it. wait your epic game library or your steam game library? my epic game library. oh your epic game library yeah i just i just buy the free games every month oh. thanks tim sweeney <laughs> thanks tim sweeney <laughs> every week Okay, oh, PS5. So PlayStation 5 is getting weird. Oh, there's PS5 news, okay. So the uh, mysterious new PS5 feature is that there's a voice com controlled assistant in it, maybe. Right? Oh. Where you're like, PS5, how do I beat this Dark Souls boss? Um, oh my god, it's Sony patent drawings. Sony patent, Sony patent drawings, drawings are, are the best, good. yeah. Well, most good. patent drawings are good because they're they're so weird and crass and they don't have much relationship to like how anyone wants something to work. But yeah, so here you go. 
like, what does uh, PS5 assistant say back to you? Oh, you should buy this microtransaction <laughs> item. The eighty percent of players used resource X to defeat the boss. <laughs> what, what's resource X? Okay, it's a healing potion. <laughs> buy a healing potion now. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, so like uh, this is interestingly not something that most players would ask for to, to be like. But you can kind of see, and the fact that they've drawn like somebody who looks like a little kid, you know, maybe sort of suggests. Children are going to love this. Yeah, they're going to be like, I can't beat it. And the PlayStation's going to be like, I can help you beat it too. <laughs> <laughs> I run the game. Would you like to cheat to me? I Just mean, give me your parents' credit card number. <laughs> okay, Naomi, you're enjoying this dystopian future way too much. I mean, it's already here, right? It's, it's just already that, here. The question is just how much people will tolerate it. And of course, this is a patent drawing. It could just be something that never is going to appear uh, in the real world in exactly that form because that's what patent drawings are. Very true. The uh, thing that already is here is the new weird ads. Have you seen this advertisement? No, I have no idea what this is. I'll play it, but we might get blocked or something oh, for playing. You'd think it's an ad. Is it like illegal now to play people's ads? Let's see if it's illegal to play other people's ads. Okay, so what is this? What are we looking at? So this is the whole first minute of this ad it has nothing related to Sony or PlayStation in it. It looks like it's some kind of, I don't know, uh, fear or one of those like horror shooters, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, they're going deep into some sort of, I don't know, Chernobyl tunnel and uh, yeah I, I did not watch this with the audio on either but I can I'm just can imagine the generic yeah sorry we don't have audio. audio just imagine what the audio is but then they uh, so what, what's going on they're looking for place the for the playstations I guess but uh, it turns <laughs> out the when they go through this door <laughs> the thing is this, this is as long as uh, Hideo Kojima's idea of what uh, advertisement should be so, so it's art it's art yeah um, so it's very moody and then they break into this room where it turns out that what's in all of these racks is beating human hearts human hearts that are somehow still alive pumping blue fluid in and out of the hearts and uh Every rack of human hearts has on top of it a PlayStation 5. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god, what? And the, the soldiers are all screaming in terror because nothing in uh, their military desensitization uh, training uh, prepared them for this. Uh, oh, PlayStation 5! PlayStation 5's uh, made of people! Uh, uh, Vice has pointed out, oh, and they, yeah, and they, and they have a PlayStation buttons tattooed on the hearts. Feel the power of PlayStation. Um, so Vice pointed out that this is actually a long tradition for PlayStation, uh, where back in the 90s, you know, they had David Lynch produce PS2 commercials. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, it's if you keep going down, I don't know if we want to play that one as well, but this is old David Lynch PlayStation 2 oh, commercial. Okay. Yeah, let's keep watching commercials. Yeah, commercials That's are what fun. NYU Game Center's all about. So this is like, I don't know, it's... They, David Lynch took some money and was like, oh, you want me to make a weird Twin Peaks ripoff? <laughs> like, you want me to just rip myself off for a commercial? Sure, give me that money. <laughs> I'm kind of into this. Yeah, actually, it's it's pretty good. It's it's obviously so good. I want to buy a PS2 now. Yeah, that, that, that's honestly, looking back, is one of my favorite consoles, I have to admit. Everyone in the chat, buy a PS2. PS2, okay? it's great. Oh, look, his head. Whoa, his arm shoots out of his mouth. What? He's missing an arm. He just has smoke. Uh, and then out of the smoke appears his arm, a person in a full body cast, a copy of himself. And uh, yeah, a person in a weird duck mask. <laughs> PlayStation. PlayStation 2. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, I, I associate this, having, having grown up in Japan when I was a kid, in the 80s and early 90s, all the advertising is kind of like this. It's like a weird non sequitur. <laughs> it's almost like, yeah, it's almost like video games are a little bit fun. Yeah. A little bit, right? I There's think a little bit of creativity there. To me, this is so much better, honestly, than commercials which are just like, and then your favorite video game character shows up and is like, come on, little buddy, let's shoot some aliens. And then it's another video game. Like, it's basically Ready Player One, but in commercial form. Like, <laughs> the worst. <laughs> oh. Um... um 
Okay, serious stuff. Important news, not PlayStation commercials. Right. So this is actually a piece I recommend checking out. Um, this is long form. Yeah, this it? is a long one. Nicole Carpenter at Polygon wrote this uh, you know, a series of interviews with Good people, job, Nicole. including me. I was one of the people interviewed about like the importance of Flash games. I think you know everybody of a certain age range like kind of grew up playing a ton of free Flash games on the web, and now that's kind of disappearing. But there is this um, there's this effort, Flashpoint, uh, by a group called Blue Maxima, that's trying to preserve every Flash and Shockwave game from that era on the web, and so it talks a lot about that, uh, and. Yeah, talking about like how many indie games kind of started off as Flash games and how it's this, yeah, it's this part of history oh, that's kind of oh. disappearing. Oh, yeah, so. Oh. And I said something about like, I said uh, that Flash games were a riot in the undergrowth. I don't know where that term came from. <laughs> oh, oh. Is that an actual term? A riot if I say, in the undergrowth. Yeah, I say what these sorts say? of games are a riot oh, in the undergrowth. Yeah, that, that's a nice turn of phrase. Yeah, did I make that up? Or is that from something? I don't know. I don't know. Let's just say you made it up. Yeah, because I just sort of think of it as like, this is the cool thing about a rainforest, right? There's just so much life going on on the forest floor. This is why Little the journalists tiny... come to you. You Maybe have the good phrases. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, uh, emulate the, the, peop the real quote bait masters like Frank Lance. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's bridges made out of opera. Sorry, 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 Frank. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, and, yes. you know, and you have a personal stake, you know, in the history of Flash. Oh, absolutely. This has almost made me cry when I saw that this, this project was going on because there's so many of us, including a lot of professors oh, here at the Game Center, um, who worked on a ton of games from this era that were only available on the web. Um, you know, me, Frank, and Eric, uh, Mattia Romeo, or Adjunct, uh, lots and lots of people worked mm -hmm. on web games. Uh, and for a lot of us just were like, well, we're never going to see that game again. It's gone forever. It's practically impossible to get it running now. Uh, and so it was a big bummer. It was like big chunks of our life just disappearing. <laughs> but now, um, yeah, it's, it's, they're being preserved. All these games from Miniclip and Addicting Games and Congregate and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, that was Newgrounds, my yeah. experience of high school. Right, exactly. Right, so it's it's a lot of people's youth. I think a lot of um, yeah, people in their twenties and thirties. Yeah, you know, nostalgia, the nostalgic waves coming around just as we need it to save the platform, maybe. To save the the platform of Flash. Yeah, Flash. Thing. Yeah, so now you're gonna be able to play all these games basically for free, but you have to just download this this one piece of software. Uh, I think, you know, rather than Epic or Steam, just download uh, Flashpoint now and you'll just basically have a kajillion old just Flash, Flash games. games for the rest yeah, of your life. You're, you're fine. Just if you have to go into a bunker. Actually, you can download the whole archive. It's many, many tens of gigs. But you could probably, you know, just live in a bunker underground and just playing Flash games for the rest of time. Yep. <laughs> See you in the bunker. See you in the bunker. Um, All right, oh, we... it's nearing 1 p.m. Yep. Um, I we... guess we'll just I'll we'll have just to wrap it up there because we have a meeting right now. Yeah, that's true. We have to go to a meeting, unfortunately. Yeah, go wait, go to the very last. Like, oh, okay. Uh, this is the uh, something I recommend. Oh you my look god, up. it's terrifying! I was so upset watching this video. Um, I oh god, I can't even look at it. It's so uh, I I can't. I have to look away. If I think about this, okay, I'll don't... start crying. Okay, uh... But it's this woman lost her daughter. This girl is dead. And then they recreated her in VR. And then the mom is like, hey, she's living out this, she's role playing that she's visiting her daughter in heaven. So it's. Oh my God. Oh God. Why, why are they doing that to that poor woman? What What's I, going on? I think the idea is that it's some form of therapy, but I, I would be pleasantly surprised uh. if there were any actual uh, professionals, uh, you know, therapeutic professionals involved in this. Uh, but yeah, she's like, you know, hugging the ghost of her daughter, and she's saying stuff like, "Are you, are you doing all right? Are you, are you happy here?" and stuff like that. It's like, oh god. Woo. Did their IRB approve? <laughs> I don't know. Do they have an IRB in Korea? Maybe. Maybe it's not universal. It looks a little bit too slick to be university production. No offense. Uh, <laughs> It sounds like oh. some weird, yeah. It looks like some weird commercial brand. It's part of it's part this. of a TV show. I think did this. Oh, oh that's God. that's why oh. I'm even more disturbed, is because it's kind of a reality TV show. No ethics here. Yeah. 
So Okay, so uh, we'll end on that downer. Yeah, we're here already. Just so you know, the dystopian future, this is the point we're at. We're at there at this point. Yeah. Black Mirror, everybody, whatever. See you in the bunker. <laughs> See you in the bunker. Let's just go in a bunker and play flash games and not think about empathy VR. All right, yeah, just uh, ask, ask Eddie's parents if it's okay. We'll just, we'll yeah, let's all bug out to New Zealand. Um, okay, uh, anyway, uh, that's our show. Uh, we had to do, we're changing a one hour format instead of a two hour format just because I hated being a TV producer last semester. As much as I loved all of you, is, uh, don't get me wrong, as much as I love Twitch, uh, it was like too much work to do stuff. So now it's just one hour for the future. Uh, this was just the first broadcast of this semester. We'll keep going probably every week for the rest of the semester. So please tune in Thursdays, noon to 1 p.m. Uh, let's cut to credits, please. Uh, I was your uh, host, Robert Yang. Uh, the news co-host was Naomi Clark. Uh, operator behind the scenes was Luke Martin. Thank you, Martin. Uh, graphics treatment was by Winnie Song. And captioning, uh, you might have noticed we have live captioning on every broadcast. Uh, captioning was done by Mirror by Night of Night Cart Services. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, everyone.